Hello, Cox and SJWs. Hope you'll enjoy this panel episode on the right wing spin machine with fellow Canadians, the Surfs. Do check out their YouTube channel and give them a follow on Twitter. I'll have their details in the show notes. We certainly had a lot of laughs and covered a broad range of topics. In these depressing times, it kind of helps to joke and laugh about the hellish political climate and the right wing spinners that helped the fash flourish. But even though we joke, do keep in mind that white supremacy is a serious, serious topic with incredibly dangerous consequences and increasingly frequent mass shootings. Recognizing who does the downplaying, spinning, and laundering for white supremacy is an important part of pushing back. Even as I record this intro, there was another neo-Nazi rally in Portland just yesterday. Andy No, of course, is spreading dangerous lies as usual to serve his far-right agenda that downplays and ignores everything fascists do at these rallies and presents Antifa as the real threat. A uh, strangely common theme in some parts of the internet. Some parts that claim they're totally not right-wing even. (sighs) What a truly vile person Andy is. But despite that, let it be stated, again, that none of us on this episode condone punching that asshole, as you'll hear multiple times. I mean, I personally think punching him gives him exactly what he wants, the perfect thing to spin, to milk, to serve that endless grift, to put money in his weasel pockets. So we don't want that. Anywho, I bring him up here because I just wanted to mention, or stress rather, that Andy's still fucking at it. In other polite conversations related news, we finally reached the patron goal. Yay! Where I'm going to start work on a post-mortem episode dissecting my previous interview with Sam Harris from a 2019 perspective. I cringe at the thought of re-listening to that Sam Harris fan version of Ina. But let the fun begin. It'll be a bit of a longer term project than the average episode since I have to comb through a three hour conversation and record my reactions. So do bear with me. And to ensure that work keeps going on that, please help me stay above that goal. If you enjoy the show, please consider supporting it with as little as a dollar via Patreon. I've also started doing patron-only mini-episodes from time to time, so if you pledge, you get access to that too. Now, let's get to this panel episode. Make sure that uh, that program doesn't contain controversial subjects, and uh, you're not impolite to people no definitely not dad you know me i'm never (laughs) ever controversial or impolite yeah yeah yeah. okay welcome to conversations with your lovable never pisses anyone off ex-muslim host Ina, keeping it non-controversial Hello, hello, and welcome to Panel 20 today. I am speaking with popular left tubers and fellow Canadians, Lance and Dave of the Surfs, and we'll be chatting about the right wing spin machine. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for coming on. I just, uh, I I saw your ballad of Andy No, and I was like, I got to talk to these guys. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. How's it going? It's going really good. I'm actually pretty surprised that we haven't had any kind of direct response from Andy himself, because I hear he's a bit uh, takedown happy when it comes to videos about him on the internet. Oh, really, eh? Yeah. No, I mean, I've, I've heard from fellow uh, left tubers or bread tubers or whatever you want to call us that uh, if you're a little bit smaller, it's when he basically takes you on and does those copyright strikes or those other kind of attacks. Mm. But of course, this is all spurious. I don't have actual evidence. That well, he also comes across as just notoriously thin skinned. Yes, that as well. <laughs> well, maybe he's been kept really busy by all the people he's had to like yeah. try to silence, right? Yeah. Or maybe he's still suffering from uh, mental anguish from that milkshake with <laughs> yeah. Right, which caused him to uh, drop his bowl of fruit or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. I can no longer carry bowls of fruit <laughs> like I once did. <laughs> it's a very, very sad story. Um, but yeah, I mean, to me, that story in particular really makes it so obvious how much of a right wing spin machine we have, especially in this like so-called skeptosphere, right? Like, I think one of you was mentioning you're a fan of the Four Horsemen and just like that rational atheist 
scene that pretends to have absolutely no biases, right? Like, <laughs> well, 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 we, we should probably clarify. Uh, past tense was. <laughs> was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like me too. I wa- was. Yeah. And uh, now we grew um, up. Yeah, I, I used to be a really big fan of uh, Christopher Hitchens, especially of, of all of them. I mean, there there is still elements of Christopher Hitchens that I still hold dear to my heart as well. So, like uh, his book on Henry Kissinger, I still have in my library, and I consider it like to be a very important piece of literature. Absolutely, yeah. yeah in, in regards to like, mm-hmm. the criticism of, of Kissinger, um, but uh, yeah, I, I was also a very big fan of uh, Sam Harris. I'm I'm ashamed to say. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, back in the day, I'm sure as other people were. Uh, Daniel Dennett, I think he's the only one who still remained respectable of all, of all the horsemen, who's still like contributing to his field of study, whereas the rest of them are kind of just celebrity tour bigots, really. <laughs> well, Hitchens is dead, so. Yeah, I mean, I don't hear much about Daniel Dennett, so I guess that's why, maybe? Like, if, maybe if he was more active online mm-hmm. than... I do feel that in a certain way, the whole discourse has has radicalized in the recent past where these guys are courting more reactionary types of audiences and responses. So in a lot of ways, the academic kind of discourse that they once portended to have seems to have fallen by the wayside and they're just going for lower hanging fruit. If that makes sense, or maybe yeah, and I feel that there's some sort of competition and insecurity when, like, I, I guess maybe they feel like Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro are becoming more relevant, so they have to court that same audience somehow. Yeah. Although, I mean, I don't think there's any explanation as to why Sam Harris brought Charles Murray <laughs> onto his show and then tried to completely justify his like race based science, right? Like, I, over I think at this and point, it's, over and over again. Yeah, that's the other thing, right? Just saying that, like, uh, you know, this is a travesty to the scientific community and he was just unfairly maligned and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, you're talking to the man you wrote the book on, like, you know, why the races have different IQs and why that's important and why we should, like, you know, judge them accordingly. <laughs> Well, I guess with Nazism and such coming back, we should be, we should <laughs> yeah. be surprised if phrenology is also. Yeah. <laughs> it's in vogue. You know? It is. It's quite fashionable. Phrenology <laughs> is quite fashionable these days, thanks to these guys. I mean, kind of wrapping this far right bullshit up in science and logic and reason is what pisses me off the most. Like, I almost have more respect for someone like Tommy Robinson, who is blatantly racist now. <laughs> he wears it on his sleeve though his, his exactly. tears soaked sleeve <laughs> exactly yeah, I mean even though he does try to like lie and change what he's saying depending on who he's talking to as well, I mean, even Richard Spencer like won't give you a straight answer. You have to kind of coax it out of him. So, I believe they call that hiding the power level. <laughs> right, right, exactly. But but at this rational skeptic level, it it seems to hold the most credibility mm-hmm. for mainstream audiences, right? And that's what's so dangerous. In yeah, most opinion. members of the intellectual dark web, in some way, shape, or form, kind of buy into that whole. Like, I, I remember seeing an interview between uh, Jordan Peterson and Stefan Molyneux, where they're basically going back and forth, and you know, Stefan's doing what he does, talking about how the differences in brain weights obviously account for <laughs> intelligence and other you know quackery. And you got Jordan Peterson on the other side saying like, you know, at the same time, it's like one of the most you know uh, horrible revelations in science, but we have to accept it and all this kind of stuff. And you're just like, wow, you're here. You're both buying into this ancient like, skull-shaped measuring. Right. And then Jordan <laughs> Peterson uh, did that whole snake DNA. Oh, I forget what it was. <laughs> I forgot about that. Some kind of weird <laughs> shit. Like, oh, it's so crazy in this in this part of the internet. You know, sometimes I talk to my real-life friends and they have absolutely no idea what I'm talking oh, yeah. about, you know? Yeah, and you can't even really begin to to tell them what you're thinking about. Like there is no context for them, right? <laughs> like to explain Jordan Peterson to my friends who are re- living in the real world. like like, there's no way to start that. <laughs> like, there's just no beginning. <laughs> or even when you see someone kind of flirting with the, oh, political correctness has gone too far. How do you tell them that that's kind of something that leads people to white nationalism without <laughs> sounding crazy, you know? <laughs> Because we were at a Christmas party last year and, you know, some of my neighbors, they're Scottish and then they were talking about this story about gingerbread men in the Scottish Parliament or something like, do you remember that? There was like, I think it was like a coffee shop. 
that like uh, said they were gonna be no. gender Although, neutral ginger cookies so, or something. Oh, oh yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. As soon as you said gender neutral, okay, but that, this like I'm guessing this is an example of PC culture gone gone awry or something. Right, exactly. And so mm-hmm. you know, I heard the worst people on Twitter, like Paul Joseph Watson and those kinds of people, like Breitbart and. Those kinds of people really freaking out about this story. Meanwhile, more sensible people were like trying to be like, guys, have some perspective. It's it's a but it's it's cookies, right? Do you really <laughs> do you really really care that much? Are you that upset about what people call cookies? And so when I hear my neighbors like at the Christmas party talk about this, all I can think of is like, oh my gosh, you guys don't know where this is. This conversation is headed. Like, just don't go down that road. Well, I mean, it's also really unfortunate that like the term social justice warrior has become like a pejorative, right? Like Mm. now just the idea is like, oh, I actually want to, you know, fight for social justice, something that sounds like something people have been doing for generations. I mean, if the same label could be gone, could be applied to the great Martin Luther King. Yeah. It's like a social justice warrior. (laughs) Marching for equality. (laughs) You know, the IDW back then would have been. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Look at this regressive fool. (laughs) There there was no hiding your power level back in those days. Yeah, they were just out. They were all super Saiyan Nazis on the streets. (laughs) So, so what, why don't you guys tell me a bit more about yourself and like how you guys got into this YouTubing and um, well to start we started actually in podcasting Lance and I have known each other for almost 20 years now oh god <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we uh, we've always been into politics and stuff and about a couple of years ago I, I want to say right after Trump the Trump election um, we decided to start a podcast because that's what two guys I guess did back then <laughs> uh, and we were just you know we were enthralled by the whole leftist movement online, the Chapo guys and, and mm-hmm. all that. So we started on that. We did the podcast for about a year. Um, and then we slowly migrated to YouTube. Mm-hmm. And then we d- almost ditched the podcast because we found <laughs> more glory in the YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll always remember the day that Dave sent me, you know, that meme with the guy checking out the the other woman that he's more interested right, in. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. So he made that, he made a meme of that one day that was like, serves podcast, serves YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, that's kind of true. <laughs> um, and obviously we found a niche or a niche on um, on YouTube because there's you know, there's more room for, I guess, leftist thoughts. And, and there was at the time the right wing reactionary movement had really latched on and, and had uh, – Oh, they were just dominating the platform. Yeah, from Paul yeah. Joseph Watson, Stephen Molyneux, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So we decided to push back on YouTube. Uh, we had that little event where our channel was brought down by – a mass army of chuds, I guess, mm-hmm. oh, and then brought no. back. And then from there, we've sort of um, blossomed. Yeah. <laughs> And, stuff. Uh, and, and expanded to Twitch. Uh, one of the reasons we moved on to Twitch, uh, just as a bit of a non sequitur here, is that we were doing live shows on the YouTube for a while. But a lot of our live shows, uh, if we did anything related to like the LGBTQIA plus community or we had people who were non-binary uh, as guests, the videos would almost always instantly be demonetized or uh. sometimes taken down, which was infuriating us to no end. So I was like, we got to find somewhere else to start doing these live shows. And while Twitch, of course, is still a mega corporation owned by uh, – <laughs> yeah, uh, it's still at least more transparently open and friendly to the LGBTQIA plus community. So that's been the reason that we basically do all our live shows on Twitch now. What, you don't buy it that one month when YouTube changes their logo to rainbow? <laughs> well, the banners change. No, it's got a rainbow. <laughs> They're progressive now. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, not to mention, I'm sure the whole Carlos Maza slash Steven Crowder incident really showed you where uh, YouTube's priorities lie. Right. YouTube, YouTube, I believe, had or I'm not sure if it was YouTube themselves or a report came out recently, I believe in the last week that indicated that YouTube themselves have admitted that they allow their larger content pro- performers to get away with. Oh, yeah. With the, rules that. Yeah. They don't have to follow the TOS. Yeah. yeah. Right. Whereas. You know, before they never, they were, we, they were never really as open about how subjectively they they uh, ran things. Yeah, yeah. So. it's kind of like how Trump gets away with like threatening war on Twitter, right? And okay. Twitter yeah, says, no one's, oh. no one's taking Trump's account yeah, down. <laughs> yeah, he can pretty much incite white nationalism. Oh, constantly. And just say that <laughs> Hillary Clinton or the Clintons killed Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. yeah. Well, 
<laughs> that's insane. It's so bizarre the times we're living in, and 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 I think that that's one of the reasons why the uh, I guess the IDW has lost a lot of supporters in this time. Like they probably gained new right wing supporters, but they've also lost people who aren't falling for their whole "I'm not right wing" thing <laughs> anymore because it's just mad how just i don't know the political climate is so crazy like i used to be someone who was like okay you know let's not overdo the oh this is racist that's sexist but now i'm like wow there's like you know literal nazis out and about and then we have these people like peter bogosian being like oh no just because you know they're sig heiling at a white nationalist <laughs> rally it doesn't mean that they're nazis you know <laughs> well you know there's there's fine people on both sides right well, <laughs> exactly like, uh, almost like a sort of a non sequitur, but almost almost related. Um, I can't remember what I was watching before I went to bed last night, but it was something about the early 2000s, and a clip came up of George W. Bush reacting right after 9-11. And when he came out and was, um, you know, he said, Islam is not the enemy, blah, blah, mm. blah, try to bring some sense of unity. And, and the SJW just instantly- cuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what a cuck. <laughs> it just uh, <laughs> it, it brought me to like the present day and I was like, God forbid a giant attack of that nature would happen. Like what would Donald Trump say? Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Scorch the earth, let no child live. Like <laughs> Yeah, murder their families. Um, We're in a point where it's like totally okay from like most of his supporters would be like, yeah. Just yeah. kill everybody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the nerve. Like, I I saw his daughter on Twitter today wishing Muslims, uh, you know, Eid Mubarak. And it's like, what the <laughs> fuck? How, how do you yeah. come out and say that even? Like... Oh, she's such a monstrous hypocrite. Oh. Yeah, the, the whole like Jared and and Ivanka, like, oh, we're the good sober thoughts. Yeah, it's like we're right, the woke ones. Nobody's falling for this <laughs> no. shit. Two years into your little white nationalist parade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So tell me about Andy. No, like, what inspired you guys to uh, create this video <laughs> on him? <laughs> so we basically like everyone else when the when the event happened uh the first thing you saw or at least the first thing we saw because it went viral very quickly was andy no's backpack covered in milkshake and like <laughs> yeah. everyone else we were rushing to like put out a funny tweet so i think we responded to the milkshake backpack with uh you shouldn't like put your porn hub account on twitter or something like that oh. right uh oh. You know, of which there was a ton of other responses. I don't think ours was the worst, but there was a lot of them. Uh, you know, and then everyone else under the sun was writing funny things. Like each bomber guy had a really funny line. I think ContraPoints had a really funny line, right? And and then afterwards, the video came out of him actually being like showing his bloody face and and being physically beaten. And immediately, I, I felt terrible, right? I was like, oh, he actually got attacked. This is really bad, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so then, like you know, obviously it shows him in the hospital. He's got that messed up eye and all that kind of stuff. Still like a somewhat black eye. Yeah, but I, I mean, still, I mean, just seeing someone and and then all you saw was that video footage from the angle where it just looks like he was getting gang beaten, right? Mm-hmm. And so like everyone else, I was like, oh, this is actually pretty bad. Like I, I don't think we can make light of this anymore and then two seconds later the the conservative spin machine went into high gear right and immediately this so, what about ism yeah came, came well, right away we saw allegations of cement mixed with yes yeah. yeah and other lunacy right and so uh, as soon as i started seeing headlines that were basically like antifa are the real terrorist groups right antifa are the ones we should all be frightened for antifa 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 uh you know, anyone who takes two seconds, like a cursory glance on Google will see that Antifa has yet to kill a single human being, right? Mm-hmm. And that that alone should have people worried or afraid that we've got this entire – and not just conservative media, right? It was popping up in CNN. It was, oh, yeah. It was popping Jim up, Tapper went off about it. Yeah. Long kind of like alt light in terms of <laughs> in terms of reporters but that 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 frightened me far more than any damage to Andy Noe's face right uh, <laughs> was just the fact that we were trying to do this equivalency it was a false equivalency that this is that it's okay to equate Antifa's actions with the right wing terrorist organization white nationalist terrorists that are killing people in the United States right day it's after like, day yeah yeah. yeah, and specifically even in Portland, Portland's obviously had been a hotbed of clashes between um, white national, the Patriot mm-hmm. Prayer groups, the Three Percenters, yep. as well as Antifa, going back for like you know a couple of years now. Yeah. where in the past, people on the like the Antifa side or the leftist side have been left with broken necks, you mm-hmm. know, assaulted pretty drastically. Mm-hmm. With Andy No 
afterwards, you know, doxing the individual, yep. the one, yeah, um, yeah. I believe it was the lady who broke her neck or, mm-hmm. dude, or spine or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the hypocrisy of that angle. Yeah. But I do also remember, like, I want to say about a week or two before the whole Andy No event, we were watching or we were doing a live stream of some sorts and we were talking about milkshaking because that was, it was starting to take off in mm-hmm. the UK. Yep. Uh, and we were talking about how quickly the conservative or the right wing spin machine is going to use this milkshaking as a real threat. Yes. Right. And oh, it didn't yeah. take them long. Mm-hmm. And, they, and just to, to to combine the fact that the, it's not a simple milkshaking, it's not harmless. It now is cement and, and it's mm-hmm. leading to brain damage and stuff yeah. it was an easy way to equate – you know, yeah. Well, I, 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 I think your good friend Sam Harris was one of the people who was like, uh, first milkshake stands small and tall cocktails. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's bizarre, right? After Charlottesville, he had this like very vague, oh, all identity politics is bad. And, you know, surely white identity politics is the worst kind of tweet. But like you milkshake Nigel Farage or <laughs> Sargon and Sam is like, you know, in a rage, like this oh, is yeah. dangerous and it's a mock assassination. And- <laughs> mock assassination. <laughs> it's practice. <laughs> yeah. It's- just, it's too bad that none of them made a big deal about like the, the victim of those milkshakings being uh, lactose intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> And then that would have fed very well into that whole milk uh, white supremacist. Uh, <laughs> I totally forgot about that angle too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, so when there's no beating, right, and mm. it's just making the people look ridiculous by milkshaking, um, mm. then they're still like screaming about it being a mock assassination and then when of course Andy No gets punched which you know none of us are you know celebrating or anything yeah I mean like I, I obviously do not condone uh, violence against and I'm going to put this in quotation marks journalists right, <laughs> right. It's, you know it's a little bit dubious as to Andy No's credentials yeah he is certainly not a journalist no. certainly not the way he purports yeah <laughs> his connections with these fascist paramilitary groups is well documented oh yeah um, so i mean yeah he's like uh what is it proud boy light <laughs> yeah and, and, and you know he definitely went there looking for this mm-hmm. right he is trying to insert himself into the story and make yeah. this you know, to to change the narrative of all this yeah and this is a nothing new mm-hmm. he spent almost you know years now making light or trying to spin uh hate crimes as hoaxes yeah um so you know it's it's tough to take a guy seriously when you spent all these years decrying all these hate crimes and attacks on lgbtqi people as Mm. as right as hoaxes and then you end up in the hospital with a a milkshake cement milkshake that <laughs> that gives you brain damage that the hospital then releases you out of like three hours later and then you're yeah. like doing the right wing news circuit like oh yeah so fast yeah. i was like wow <laughs> brain hemorrhage and like 20 interviews in the same day like, i mean he did have a british accent all of a sudden so. yeah that was that was neat <laughs> that, yeah that is strange but okay so what do you say to the people that would say that oh you know when you say like oh he went looking for this kind of thing because he makes those types of clips viral that you're sort of um doing the whole oh she was asking for it that of course that's not my perspective but what mm-hmm. do you respond to that with um well that's uh that's a very good fox news question some <laughs> some people say <laughs> Um, I, I, yes. And again, I do not just, I, like I said, I don't condone him getting beat. I don't think that's justifiable, but I just think that Andy No, as a reporter, for example, it's, it's him looking for a narrative. Like I, okay. So I think that's a false equivalency because I do not think that a woman, even if she dresses promiscuous is in any way, shape or form asking to mm. be like violated. I don't think that's part of what mm. happens. Whereas Andy No was looking for something to happen to him. I don't think. Yeah. Like he literally so, was 
like yeah, goading people. Like if you watch, so uh, you know, Vic Berger released uh, a very good compilation clip that he put together from the Periscope footage of Andy, where you'll see Andy for the first half of it basically antagonizing members of Antifa, right? So he stands in front of them, goes really close to their faces, and holds cameras up to their faces and starts saying like, "This is Antifa. They've got the three arrow symbol. They're preparing yeah. for their attack and all this other stuff, right?" And being told multiple times, "Please get away from me." And right? he has like, a history of doxing them, right? Oh, yes, trying to yes, dox them. Yes. Absolutely, right? So he's clearly not welcome. Uh, this goes on for a very long time before someone finally throws the first milkshake, right? And it isn't even a direct throw. They kind of like – he gets a splash on the side of him. And right afterwards, he then gets up and walks to the police, right? And then, yeah, <laughs> he's like, I was just assaulted. I'd like to file a, an assault, right? So this is clearly what he's he's trying to do, right? He's, he's pushing them, trying to see – like that's the reason we compared it to TMZ because yeah. that seems to be the reporting style of TMZ, right? Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, They've weaponized this kind of I get in your face if I hold a camera right up to your face and start saying stuff. Just it's a human gut, like, you know, visceral reaction that you're going to eventually strike back. Right. Yeah. Is, is what you're hoping for. And nobody can conflates TMZ reporters as journalists. Right. Right. We all acknowledge them as paparazzis. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, once again, not to say that they deserve kind of be assaulted or have their equipment damaged, but yeah. there is a considerable difference in how we approach these. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we wanted to say Andy No is a far right paparazzi antagonist, mm-hmm. that changes the the whole distinction between being a far right reporter. Right. Right? I don't think he qualifies himself as far right reporter, but I mean, Quillette, I mean. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and. Did you see him on Dave Rubin? Like Dave was doing his usual, oh, you're not even right wing, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're just like me. You just want to have a high marketplace of ideas, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And he was like, ah. You know, he wasn't too into like denying the right. The right well, I mean, Dave, Dave has also been loving to trump around the uh, identity politics of this all, right? Like he said multiple times, he's like, oh, well, yes. he's gay and he's Asian. Yeah, that double be minority. Liberal books. I don't see what's going on here, right? Yeah. I <laughs> don't really like to play that sure. game, but, you know, as long as we're playing that game, double minority, yeah. Yeah. double minority. <laughs> Like, Dave, you fucking love identity politics, Dave. I have rarely come for, across someone who likes identity politics identity as politics much all the time. No one loves them more than Dave Rubin. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And the proportion of this story, as we've already said, like none of us are supportive of this kind of treatment of even the worst people like Andy. Mm-hmm. But to turn it into this monster of a story where like democratic presidential candidates are now criticized for not reaching out to Andy no sufficiently <laughs> or on time. <laughs> How it, did that happen? It, I mean, <laughs> you know, Joe Biden doesn't surprise me at all. It just kind of seems par for the course for Joe Biden. <laughs> and, and Yang, right? Oh yeah. 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 Who wasn't good Andy enough no for Dave. It's like a nice, what, $200,000 go find me out of this. Uh, not to mention he's fundraising another $100,000 uh, defense legal fund. Right. Yeah. Yes. He is milking it. No mm. pun or maybe pun intended. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then what, what also is interesting, if we're still talking about uh, Mr. No, is the uh, the recent shootings that just occurred, right? Yes. Because Andy No, that day when the first shooting, uh, well, I guess they occurred within the very small time frame, but didn't report on that at all. He actually posted a three-year-old clip of some Antifa kid jumping on a car uh, instead of talking about, you know, the white nationalist mass shooting that just occurred and uh, has then taken to himself to basically reaching out to anyone who is in the leftist sphere that the Dayton shooter might have followed or contacted and asking all these different content creators if uh, they knew him. He was their friend, not even if they knew him. Like, was he your friend? Yeah. He RT'd you one time. (laughs) (laughs) Apparently a like on Twitter or Facebook or anything in the social media world now means that uh, everybody's connected and friends. Yes, yes. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that the guy's politics really was at all linked to the shooting, like as far as we know. As like, like I yeah I, I don't want to really comment too much on something that I don't fully know because a lot of the details are out yet. But the stuff I am aware of is the fact that he sounds more like an incel than he does like a um, a far leftist activist of any kind. Because I mean he had a what was it a rape and murder list for women that he knew. 
uh, which to me is, you know, there's a lot of he alarm just bells sound, there. I mean, like, I don't even want to throw the incel thing out there, but he did sound very misogynistic. And yeah. he had, um, I guess, fellow high school classmates oh, who've since all graduated, but mm-hmm. come out and say that he was quite the bully. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it doesn't seem like this shooting is politically motivated mm-hmm. it just and seems it's like been, it's one of your run-of-the-mill american rampage shootings which yeah. happen all too often mm-hmm. but i feel because it came right on the heels being almost what five hours or so after the el paso shooting that was you know widely accepted as a politically inspired shooting that brought all this heat upon the right-wing media and the mm-hmm. president as a whole this whole right wing, you know, Koch brothers finance news or media mm-hmm. decided that what better way yeah, to we, we need an implicate, here, yeah, yeah. To, to make an equivalency yeah. on the other side. Yeah. yeah, they seem to just, um, I don't know, conflate things for their own convenience, whether there's any truth to it or not. Like mm-hmm. the El Paso shooter had this explicit manifesto where he i think praised the christchurch shooter and yeah. talked about great replacement type stuff and so you can see his political motivations but we haven't so far had anything like that from the dayton shooter just like people are commenting on his twitter profile and who he liked and stuff right yeah mm-hmm. so i mean it's too there's too much of read into whether or not some one person is ideologically on one side of the spectrum mm-hmm. or not. If a person commits some atrocities but is like, uh, I don't know, a Mitt Romney supporter, we wouldn't run and say, oh, Mitt Romney, you know, inspired the inspired shooting. The shooting. Yeah. Um, but it's very obvious from where Donald Trump stands and his rhetoric, which mm-hmm. is much in line with his, you know, constant Hispanic invasion yeah. and the like. There is a direct correlation between those words and these actions of a lot of these mega chuds who seem to go on these rampages. Not to mention the like basically most of conservative media, whether that's online, your YouTube Ben Shapiro's, right, constantly Tucker pushing Tucker Carlson. Yeah, or Tucker Carlson, who's the the mainstream white nationalist. Um, they're all pushing this idea of, and whether or not they call it the Great Replacement, right, because that's kind of the Lauren Southern Stephen Molyneux term, but it's just this idea of vilifying the other right this mainstream concept of immigrants coming over mm-hmm. to take your jobs or i mean it's i mean take your jobs was kind of the friendly 90s problem right and now they're actually coming here to, to literally replace you yeah now <laughs> it's the birth rate of the body snatchers kind of idea <laughs> yeah and i mean there was uh paragraphs from an old sam harris book fear mongering about the muslim population in france where he said the muslim birth rates were ominous and stuff and I think people brought it out <laughs> after um, the Christchurch shooting where he didn't really apologize for it. He continued to defend, you know, he's like, oh, I just used this oh, insert crazy conspiracy fear mongering like Infowars Arabia <laughs> book that he got his numbers from. And he's just like, oh, well, that's where I got my numbers from. Not like, oh, yeah, well, well maybe I was wrong. <laughs> Oops. Oopsie doopsie. <laughs> I mean, I, I would at this point like to see someone like, say, Ben Shapiro, who, I mean, for the first time, I believe, tweeted out that this is white nationalist terrorism and then we should call it as such, right? Which I guess is progress in terms of him. <laughs> but I, I would like to still see him come forward and uh, both remove his video of the myth of the right. tiny radical Muslim minority, that video which has uh, been cited by numerous um, people who have committed these atrocities, such as like you know the Quebec shooter, right. um, as as being an inspiration and something that like galvanized them into this state of pure fear and panic. And do that, you think you know, Andy No asked Ben Shapiro if he was friends with Bissonnette? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Somehow, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's the obvious, obvious. Uh, dishonesty and hypocrisy that just it drives me mad mm-hmm. and well, I feel so much of it's just uh, it's so much of it to me screams grift mm-hmm. these guys don't really mean especially when it comes down to it 
a lot of those like going back to original conversation the the four horsemen types mm. those guys seemed very rational at the start right yeah. they, they are intelligent people who are able to see the hypocrisy of a lot of their statements or the fact that their sources are just clown shoes <laughs> <laughs> but, that's the official term yes, yes it's clown <laughs> shoes. Uh, but the money is too good yeah. right these days there's a lot of money to be had it's a lucrative marketplace mm -hmm. to peddle this kind of easily digestible hate mm -hmm. and you know it's just better to double down than to pull off and yeah. be rational about mm -hmm. this do you think though that someone like sam is really in it for the money yeah, I think I, I, well, it I would drives say, him considerably, not entirely. But. Well, someone like Sam Harris, I say maybe the ego. Yeah, that's what that. I would yeah. say too. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, a little bit further than money. But either way, I mean, so if we're talking about Sam in particular, it, it, it's never really been apparent to me when this switch happened. Like maybe it was always present within his writing because like I, I, I yeah. have The End of Faith, right? Like I've, I've read that book and I've read a handful of his other books and, you know, Letter to a Christian Nation I thought was really good as well. Mm -hmm. And I, like maybe I was just younger then. I just I never got these hugely Islamophobic overtones or, you know, for, for a better example, Richard Dawkins, mm -hmm. right? Like I, I used to love Richard Dawkins and uh, I, like I've read so many of his books and it, I don't know when it happened where, the, you know, all of a sudden I'm like, looking at his Twitter account and he's tweeting out things like, oh, the sound of the church bells yeah, in the morning is so was, much better than <laughs> Alu Akbar when Winter Green, things like that. And like, this is just blatant, yeah. you know? Like, <laughs> like the principled atheist statue. Yeah, right. yeah, the, oh, we love the church bells. It's like a really bizarre, bizarre yeah. for such a hardcore atheist to... This is like the Douglas Murray brand of atheism. I don't know how familiar <laughs> you are with him, but he's all about the churches and the Jesus and Christianity and Christian values. And um, he's like criticized Dawkins for being too anti-Christian before. And now somehow like we've got Jordan Peterson bringing all these guys back to Jesus. And um, <laughs> maybe that's it. Maybe Peterson has been the glue that holds the, the IDW Christian sect together. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I've even seen Richard Dawkins speak. Uh, my brother, when I was uh, much younger, gave me tickets to see Richard Dawkins as a birthday present. And I was ever so oh, excited. Wow. <laughs> I know. And I remember he... What a nerd. <laughs> 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 pretty nerdy. Uh, but I remember at the end of it, he ended his speech by saying, uh, someone asked him, like, what's the worst part about college campuses or stuff like that? And this was one of the first times I'd heard this where he's like, no more safe spaces. He was like, no more safe spaces we need to be able to say whatever we want and 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 the safe space and, and you know not didn't use the term like social justice or PC culture but definitely was a, a, in that vein so mm. that was the first time that I had been exposed to this like let's stop being PC and start you know saying whatever we want kind of the rhetoric from these characters. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you don't realize just how far it's going to go, right? You're like, oh, they just want to be able to criticize religion. I guess people are sensitive about that. But no, no, no. It goes so much further than that. Oh, absolutely. Really, they just want to drop the N-word. <laughs> yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, quite <laughs> literally. <laughs> and I mean, you know, to that point, it, especially when it comes to the intellectual dark web and all these quote-unquote free speech warriors, right? Uh I don't know when it evolved into that, but I, no one on the left has ever said that we want to take away, you know, people's freedom of speech. Uh, we just want you to be aware that freedom of speech isn't the same as freedom of consequence. So exactly. If you, if you are going to get on the radio and start dropping the N word constantly, as if it's just like you know a really fun thing to do and it's totally fine and you know part of decent conversation, you are going to be privy to a whole bunch of people calling you a racist and a bigot. Like that's just what that's just what that is. Right, and I think Sam uh, a couple of years ago did quite literally tweet about how there's no more free speech at some college campus because a professor got, I guess, some consequences for showing up in blackface to a Halloween party where students were present. <laughs> <laughs> PC culture run amok. I mean, how do you openly you can't do vaudeville acts anymore? <laughs> it's just been so shocking <laughs> to to witness this, right? I guess we just did not, or I didn't notice it as much when the environment, the political environment, wasn't as right wing. So it seemed like okay, you know, the left just in power and things are just moving forward so you know all of us lefties can sort of debate amongst ourselves and push back amongst ourselves and 
But now when the far right is in power and it's rising and there's Nazis shooting everywhere and and these people are still fixated on their, oh, no more safe spaces and, oh, you can't even <laughs> wear blackface anymore. And it's like, what? <laughs> That's when the uh, mask slips. Yeah, and, and the other the other thing is people like Tim Pool, right, who are now trying to turn yeah. it around, say things like misgendering is part of like you know the abolishment of free speech because like we're not allowed to misgender intentionally people on Twitter, or if we do that, it's showing some kind of bias against conservatives if they suddenly get like strikes against them for that kind of stuff. Well, yeah. that comes back to the original Jordan Peterson, right? Thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill C like Everybody's going to get locked up in Canadian prisons. No, if yeah. you misgender somebody. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was a, it was a complete misunderstanding of the the law itself which is basically just adding those expressions and terms to, uh, you know, you cannot commit genocide <laughs> against yeah. those people. I mean, it, it added it to the hate laws of Canada, yeah. right? That, that's that's all it was. There, there was. There's still zero cases of a single Canadian going to jail for using this yeah, the wrong pronoun or whatever it is. So, I mean, it seems to me sometimes that the right is really good at spinning things and, mm. you know, some people on the left, maybe liberals, people like they they tend to fall for it, like in a way like, oh, they value honesty a lot more than the right and they want to hold their own accountable. So the left seems to be disadvantaged. And so the right just keeps doing this, you know, like they don't care about the truth. They don't care about hypocrisy. They just want to keep spouting their bullshit. Yeah, in a lot of ways, their whole industry is built off just fake outrage. It's one lurching fake outrage take after another, right? That's what the, the modern media landscape is. You mean there's not a war on Christmas? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I guess that was the original. And now they just – they're like, how about we take that whole war on Christmas – <laughs> debacle and turn it into a yearly weekly thing where everything happens this week we could do this we could do that and to the rights credit they have almost a unified voice when it comes to messaging their content um, whether it's come from Fox News or a lot of these Koch brothers and Mercer funded um, publications on the internet they're all able to sort of capitalize on these little I guess viral takes of the week and then weaponize that story and it's everywhere whereas when you see the same thing happen on the west or sorry the west on the left side <laughs> there's no unified financial component that can really get our message out in the same way mm -hmm. so things are fractured and mm -hmm. just sort of disappear in the ethos i was um so the story that came out this week there was that movie what was it called the hunt Mm -hmm. So that got canceled. The, like, so I don't know if Lance knows about no, it. Right. So, so the whole movie was about – so a trailer came out about this movie um, about these people hunting deplorables. OK. And they're like hunting them down to kill them. And obviously the mega chuds out there lost their mind and went bananas <laughs> over it. It's like, oh, you're, you know, you're killing us and this is all <laughs> So it turns out actually – Wait, that, sorry. So they were killing right-wingers? Yeah. So but the, the – Did the a right-winger make this movie? Yeah, so ah. it turns out that the movie itself, the people hunting the deplorables in the movie are the bad guys, and the deplorables in the movie are the actual protagonist. Uh. They just couldn't see through the trailer and you understand that and now the movie has been cancelled oh, because shit. the online like backlash from the mega chuds has all but cancelled this movie and all I could think about was if this happened on the other side of the spectrum yeah. the outrage from the PC right wing culture yes. would be like oh my god look at these leftist PC shutting down free speech movie Yeah, but we won't see much of that from the left angle <laughs> <laughs> no, and time and time again, you can see like Trump threaten free speech. Like, yeah, no, absolutely. And yeah. Ruben won't have a damn thing to say about it. Yeah. yeah. The, none of those, like all those IDW guys, no, they, nothing. Yeah. They champion the free speech, but they. They're seldom there when, say, like a socialist professor in the States is being sanctioned for his speech. Yeah. Right? No, Pushing and. I don't know if you saw Eric uh, Weinstein tweet about some article that mentioned like the Dayton shooter and the El Paso shooter. And he talked about how, oh, the left should really stop saying men are toxic from birth, <laughs> the permanent original sin. And then he followed up with this 
really bizarre straw man, like the left should stop celebrating <laughs> open borders, niqabs, trans women in sports. and like, <laughs> as, and, as only he knows how to do. Like, he'll, he'll never find a way not to weave in, like, there are only two genders into any conversation he has. It's like, who? I mean, what? I don't even know where to start with that. Like, how is that, firstly, that list related to the shooters? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who on the left is even saying that men are sort of are toxic from birth? Like, how are you guys surviving? <laughs> as, it's uh, a classic principle of all left. <laughs> I believe it was Karl Marx. <laughs> <laughs> all men are toxic. <laughs> Born into toxicity. <laughs> it must be cleansed. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, well, I mean, that, that that just goes down to multiple fundamental misunderstandings of what exactly is toxic masculinity, right? And, and I mean, it doesn't help that we live in the age of woke corporations now. So oh, we've got yeah. you know, all these woke ads popping out all the time. So they're all trying to out-woke each other, too. I mean, if Gillette releases the toxic masculinity yeah. ad, then Burger King's like, oh, we got to do depression and suicide. <laughs> Release the suicide burger right now. But it upsets <laughs> them all them. so much. Like, any sort of diversity, or as, as transparent and, you know, superficial as it is, like Dave Rubin and Weinstein's will like be outraged by like a Gillette ad, you know, mm -hmm. that's pretending to be woke or whatever. You, you got to realize, guys, like they're playing you. <laughs> <laughs> you see that, right? Like, it's, it's a company. And, like, <laughs> it's about the money. <laughs> and even then, the whole point of the ad is like, don't be dicks. Yeah. <laughs> why, why don't we lower the dick bar a bit? Right? <laughs> it's like, what an upsetting message. <laughs> Burn your razors. <laughs> Throw them in the toilets. <laughs> um, and I, I feel like Sam Harris and Tucker Carlson are kind of merging into one, and it's really strange. <laughs> I don't know if you heard the clip of him saying like Christchurch shooting was like just you know shit posting and. An entirely bogus manifesto. And yeah, let me just play that clip so that people can hear what I'm talking about. Things go well past shit posting when you, you know, commit horrific genocide. <laughs> yeah. Right, with an explicit manifesto that's yeah. t the <laughs> that's titled really Great well Replacement. <laughs> okay, so here we are. There are people, it seems, who fall into one of these two categories who are living in an online culture of trolling now where killing people and writing semi-bogus or entirely bogus manifestos merely designed to confuse the media is becoming a new phenomenon, right? These are people who are not moved by a sincere ideology. Please. They're just, quote, shitposting. The behavior of trolling on websites like 4chan and 8chan has been exported to the real world in the form of mass murder designed as a troll. And uh, to some degree, I believe the Christchurch shooting in the mosque had this form, right? It's still not entirely clear what happened there. So what? this is a <laughs> there's just no way of knowing what he wanted to do. <laughs> How will we ever figure it out? It goes, it goes back to that uh, to old classic 1920s and mass uh, murder. German shit post, Mein Kampf. Oh yes, yes, I remember that. Yes, <laughs> that was the, the greatest uh, shit post of all time, I believe. <laughs> oh. oh my That's god. Just it, absurd. And dangerous. And dangerous. So dangerous, yeah. right? Yeah. Like it's very clearly written out what their motives are in those attacks, both the Christchurch one as well as the El Paso one. There is a direct line between the rhetoric where they espouse great replacements and target specific types of people and then commit atrocities towards them. Yeah. There's a direct line. Like shit posting would be if he had a manifesto about how great Burger King is, then went out and killed somebody. Yeah. Yeah. That's shit posting. That's shit posting. Yeah. I mean, there was a trolling and shit posting kind of element to it, but who's to like how can you say that there's no idea like you can mix shit posting yes. online shit posting culture with ideology very clearly. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 
And even in Dave's example, if someone was to say like Burger King is great and then, you know, murdered a hundred people of Jewish descent, I would be pretty clear as to what his motivations were. You know, like I, Burger I King's bad. <laughs> <laughs> just hates the Whopper meal. Um, but obviously, I mean, you know, in, in that case, your actions speak even louder than your words. And then if you on top of that have a manifesto in which you, you know, stole all these kind of conspiracy theories and, you know, white the fact nationalist that the conspiracy, white nationalist theories, yeah. is a cabal trying to control us through the globalists and all this kind of stuff. I, I think it's pretty apparent what exactly was going on there. It's so strange to me that he is, you know, rightfully accused time and time again of anti-Muslim sentiment. And then he goes and publicly uh, records this thing about this massive anti-Muslim shooting saying, oh, it's hard to say what even happened there. You know, it's just shit posting. Eh? No real ideology whatsoever. And let's like flip that on its head if it was – a Muslim extremist. Imagine. Who, you know, yeah. who, whose entire all a Muslim all a Muslim extremist has to do is say Al Akbar. Yeah. Right? The you could write an entire screed uh, that is entirely composed of hate towards something entirely different or an actual shit post. But yeah. if at the end you sign off but just by saying Al Akbar, th- that's enough to be yeah. you know ideologically driven. Yeah. Right. I don't know if you ever heard his episode where he's reading excerpts from the like ISIS magazine. Oh, no. And uh, he's all wait, like. Wait, wait. There, there's, there's an ISIS magazine? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, I think it's called Dabik or something. Does, does it, oh, uh, yeah, that's right. I oh, okay. That, yeah. Does it have like high production values like their trailers? And... It's like Vice basically. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, he's reading that and he's all like, oh, see, see, this is what they say. And as if, you know, they're totally honest and you should really take them at their word for what they're saying. And, but you know, if it's a white nationalist, it's like, eh, it's hard to say what they mean. <laughs> How can you be so transparent and so <laughs> oblivious to your own biases? Like Sam will go on in every interview, like, oh, no, 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 I'm not, I don't have any biases, you know? It's like... Uh, I'm not tribal at all. No, no, no. I would know if I was being tribal. That's kind of an evolution then of like it, it used to be that uh, – what is it? White nationalists, uh, any kind of like mass shooting that occurred at the, the hands of uh, a white individual it was just mental illness, right? It's just a lone yeah. – it was just a lone wolf. We, we, we know for a fact that this person just had uh, problems and they were deeply you know, deranged or whatever it is and that's why they committed this atrocity. And now, now the, they can't really get away with that when these guys are – Releasing manifestos. manifestos. Yeah. It's, it's a little less like, oh, OK, this is a lone wolf. And well, that's the other thing. There's no they're no longer lone wolves. Right. They are the majority since 9-11 of the perpetrators of terrorist domestic terrorist attacks in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. And just because they're not part of one coherent organization, it doesn't mean that there isn't an ideology behind what they're doing. Yeah. And it doesn't mean they're not as dangerous as a group that was organized. Yep, absolutely. Even ISIS, though, would, like, radicalize people. Like, like people would just, like, you know, come across them online and just be sort of self-radicalized by them. They weren't necessarily training them or anything. Yeah, right? in, in, in a lot of ways, the same radicalization that happens amongst – um, let's say ISIS recruits or those extreme Muslim communities is the same as that was that is happening in the white nationalist groups, right? Mm-hmm. They were usually prey on the same type of people, isolated young men. Yeah, looking for um, identity. Yeah, mm-hmm. just dangerous rhetoric. And then, you know, you give them a sense of belonging, you give them an enemy. Inspire them. Inspire them. Yeah, for the great replacement or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then set them loose. Um, but at least – and when it comes to Muslim terrorism or extremism, there is a global effort or at least a Western effort to clamp down on, say, message boards or, tra- or that kind of trafficking of ideas where we still know in the United States the counterterrorism efforts are still predominantly focused a- away from white nationalism, even though the FBI themselves are like white nationalism is our biggest threat. Right. Um, and Trump but, is considering <laughs> declaring Antifa a terrorist organization. And then, I mean, in terms of efforts to actually silence that in the United States, like, what are you going to do? Take Tucker Carlson off the air? Because <laughs> like, a lot of that messaging is coming through very mainstream sources. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't even have to go online or HN. Yeah. Or HN. You can just turn on Fox News. You can just turn on Fox News. <laughs> right. And what was Tucker saying recently? That white supremacy is a hoax. Yeah. yeah. Like, 
I mean, and, everyone's been saying that for so long. That, that was Stephen Crowder's bread and butter for a long time. Like, is this a white nationalist? Is this? We don't even know what a white nationalist is anymore, you know? And you're, and you're just like, well, yeah, we do. Yeah, we, yeah, we do. <laughs> right. We've a clear idea of that for a long time. <laughs> right. Like, as I said, like Peter Bogosian said to me once that, you know, people that were sig heiling and waving swastika flags, just, just because they're doing that doesn't mean they're Nazis. <laughs> yeah, they can just be recreationists, you know, <laughs> have, an, have a lark. They're LARPing as Nazis. Yeah. Not well, so no, Nazis. didn't Quillette have a literal article about that? Like they had like the different, you know, people that are so supposedly LARPing as Nazis and how they're <laughs> Absolutely no Nazis to worry about in Canada. <laughs> I mean, I think they've got a much bigger problem with uh, people LARPing as <laughs> journalists and submitting articles to their publication <laughs> without any kind of due diligence. <laughs> right. And I, did you guys uh, follow that whole SoCal squared hoax and the conceptual penis hoax and – those. I didn't. I didn't hear the conceptual penis one. The one I'm. The one I was referring to is the Archie Carter one. Right. Sure. So these Quillette types of people, they did this this hoax where they published these bogus papers in these journals and uh, you know celebrated some great victory, saying that I don't know gender studies is too ideological and should be defunded or something, mm-hmm. but. Now, when Quillette was hoaxed in a very similar way, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, we should just learn that everyone can be fooled by, um, you know, hearing what they want to hear. And it's like a completely different attitude. Now, of course, their supporters are saying, but Quillette isn't like a, you know, peer reviewed journal. um, So it shouldn't be held to the same standards, except like the very basic standard of fact checking <laughs> and confirming the identity of the person who's writing for you and not uh, embellishing their story further uh, is not really such a rigorous it's not really such a hard bar to cross if you're you know claiming to be this amazing place of truth and Good journalism when everything else is infected by postmodern neo Marxism, <laughs> only beacon well, I mean, of light. Andy No is the editor there. So. <laughs> <laughs> what does that tell you? <laughs> oh, it tells me a great deal, but I mean, they themselves seem to think they're the only real journalists around, right? So when they get caught by this, what's his name, Archie Carter? Yeah, uh, Archie Carter. (laughs) It's really fascinating to see the difference of attitude by these people who think think that they hoax the left in that way and that the, the subjects should just be done away with because they're far too ideological. And, uh, Oh, we can all learn from our mistakes when <laughs> Quillette is hoaxed. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, it goes back to that same hypocrisy of, you know, pretty much everybody in the IDW it's do as we say. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's really what bothers most people about mm-hmm. the IDW versus like getting as pissed off about like open right wingers. It's like, OK, at least they're like honest about their beliefs and they're not pretending to be these super rational extremely unbiased above tribalism brain geniuses whereas <laughs> the I believe that's their official title they give themselves brain, brain geniuses, brain geniuses. <laughs> <laughs> that would be yeah. a good t-shirt if you want to make it <laughs> extremely rational brain genius extremely <laughs> rational brain genius <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wear it on a first date and see how that goes. Yeah, and, and in brackets, high IQ. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is sexier than a high IQ, right? And a, and a guy who's bragging about high, yeah. having a high IQ. Hey, baby. <laughs> I'm 163. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's something really wrong with the intelligence of people who brag about their high IQs. As funny as that sounds, but really. Their incredibly heavy brains are just weighing them down. Like That's, that's all the <laughs> okay, so now I have a question from a listener. All right, so I have a question from Leather Kevin. What do you think are some of the ways to counteract this right wing spin? How do we fight propaganda? Uh, 
Ooh, this is going to sound a little bizarre, but one of the reasons that we are so active in the YouTube community is we're actually trying to actively push back on the right wing machine that has dominated the algorithm of the platform. Mm-hmm. Um, for those unaware, the algorithm of YouTube works in a way that it tries to get the viewer to watch as much content for as long as possible. So whatever it thinks will keep you glued to YouTube and never turn away is what it'll keep force feeding you in terms of suggestions and stuff like that. And for a long time, a lot of these far right reactions we're creating a lot of low budget, low fi content and uh, making it incredibly reactionary. So it was really tapping into an untapped market, right? But a lot of ideas and stuff like that that weren't ideas. Able to be yeah, some high level ideas <laughs> that weren't able to be put into mainstream media and other outlets like that. We're finding a great home on YouTube. And because of that, they all rose to the top. The whitest cream <laughs> rose to the top of the uh, the algorithm. And for that reason, that's why if you go on YouTube with a fresh account, you've never used it before and you make a little search and you might even look up like, you know, uh, how to change a, a tire. Uh, and all of a sudden, you're right. The right side of your bar is going to be filled up with Jordan Peterson owns college debate student Ben Shapiro destroys with logic and truth and science and all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So one of the reasons we're really trying to uh, galvanize and bring up leftist voices and also not keep the left a country club on YouTube, like really mm-hmm. help out a lot of smaller content creators and, and uplift them. Right. Is that by having way more of that in the algorithms of YouTube and then getting fed into that, we, we are hoping and we're seeing it happen in real time. Mm-hmm. People are starting to get much better ideas, high, high level <laughs> ideas suggested to them in the free marketplace of ideas. And there's a lot of people on the left side of YouTube, at least going out there regularly and, and debunking mm-hmm. these kind of talking points yeah. um, on a pretty f- steady basis. I mean, yeah. like we, our video on Andy Noah was one, mm-hmm. um, but for almost every little propaganda piece, say like uh, prayer, you would drop like yeah. you know, like Sean might rebut yeah, that. And, Sean and, or three arrows. So, or so there is there is a Logan, stable you know. kind of pushback. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the leftist voices aren't as. Amplified. You know, amplified because there's not as much money behind it. But mm-hmm. we're just working in that socialist kind of veneer of like <laughs> holding ourselves, you know, using the community to ri- raise everybody else's voices yeah. and do your best to share and fact check people when possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when it comes to like engaging, I guess, engaging with these uh, high level ideas, um, <laughs> you know, so I, I think uh, Vadim asked me uh, about. Bernie and going on Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think that's a good idea to like engage with Rogan and his audience when you well, I mean, know we, that he's going to put a, maybe a spin on it or his audience won't be so receptive right. to it? Um, well, I mean, you know, let me be clear. Uh, <laughs> when it comes to Joe Rogan, I don't consider Joe Rogan to be alt right. You know, I mean, a lot of people levy that charge against us because we have a video say, is, that says how Joe Rogan can be a pipeline or like right. a gateway to the alt right. But I do not in any way, shape or form think that he's alt right. I think um, Joe Rogan is definitely a, a right leaning libertarian and uh, obviously has so much intellectual dark webbery on his mm-hmm. show that I'm sure a lot of his audience has now been fully whatever pill we call that. Brain ID pilled. Yeah, pilled. Yeah, right. Pill right um, whatever it is. But. I, I, I have absolutely no problem with someone like that coming on. And, and we would even have someone like uh, Sargon of Akkad come on our show. But the reason for that being is not to platform him, but to vilify <laughs> and like, yeah, just spend the whole hour Mock. ripping into the guy. Right? right. Yeah. Like that. That would be the difference. Uh, I've seen the, the Bernie Sanders episode and Joe Rogan doesn't make him try DMT or anything like that. <laughs> he uh, he actually has a very, um, you know, open conversation. But you know what's more important than that one was his interview with Cornell West. Because it's Cornell West who I think for the first time really opened Joe Rogan's mind better than DMT ever could to mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah well, well, <laughs> to a whole bunch of concepts of uh, you know socialism the history of socialism socialists in America and it was pretty apparent you know through ways through that interview that Joe wasn't doing his normal thing where he kind of parrots right wing talking points and pushes back against a lot of those uh, ideas and was actually open to receiving a lot a lot of it as well see I'm in two different veins here one of our issues with Joe Rogan in our videos was that Joe Rogan um, seldom pushed back against the quackery of his guests, you know, when you'd have somebody say something blatantly wrong or racist or misogynistic, he would just accept it. And that in itself has um, terribly negative consequences. But that also, on the same token, amplifies or helps leftist voices when Bernie Sanders can go on. Like Joe Rogan's not going to give you, you know, a very aggressive 
uh, stance. He's mm-hmm. going to accept you and let you speak your mind and give you an honest platform. So in that sense, I'm I'm more for it. I think you should have more leftist voices. But I have a different opinion when, say, it comes to Tucker Carlson and, say, even hosting people like Grant Greenwald on his show, whereas mm-hmm. Tucker Carlson is – uh, an avowed white nationalist who just needs to be off the air. Yeah. And I feel you're doing yourself a disservice by going on his like white nationalist out power hour. Unless you, unless you came on there to say, Hey, by the way, you're a white nationalist. <laughs> yes, right? Not just to bash the left. Yeah. Which, like he's right. For somebody to bash the left. Yeah. You're, of course. you're just doing yourself a disservice. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen either of those Rogan episodes, but uh, I think I agree with you generally that, I think it can be helpful to engage with those types and uh, try to reach their audience rather than yeah. cut yourself off. I mean, we, we are obviously, you know, team Bernie. So if being on the Joe Rogan podcast, which is the largest podcast, I believe, in existence, mm-hmm. helps amplify Bernie Sanders messaging as well as perhaps galvanize some more people who might work on his campaign or on his behalf, then I think that's a win in yeah. my mm-hmm. books. So, like, I have a six-month-old baby, and I was playing some video of shapes or colors for him. And the autoplay automatically started, after that video, started recommending, like, Joe Rogan stuff <laughs> to him. Oh, my God. <laughs> Joe like, Rogan ru- rules the YouTube. <laughs> I don't know. Like, Joe Rogan what? destroys babies with facts <laughs> and logic. <laughs> How did that happen? Is it because, like, I watched this disgusting right-wing shit sometimes yeah, that my probably, poor that's, child that's so once once you do it once it's gonna be in your feed forever yeah that's why you, like anytime i watch joe rogan even if it was watched that cornell west thing i do it on an incognito browser yeah i just don't it. want my youtube <laughs> yeah. to be destroyed i, right. I have uh, like accounts that i use only for research. like research <laughs> yeah <laughs> specifically for research that's a good idea yeah so i don't want like to be i don't know showing him the shapes and after Octagon, we get Jordan <laughs> Peterson. <Octagon. laughs> yeah, Joe Rogan's secret word. <laughs> oh, it was a pleasure chatting with you guys. Yeah, yeah. thanks for, so um, much for having us. Yeah, yeah cool. we'll we'll chat again. And uh, we'll have to have you on our show uh, as soon as you're available. Yeah, I'd love that. All right. I think we covered a great deal. And uh, any closing thoughts? Support every smaller content creator you can. Is, it would be my, my final thought because at the end of the day, there is no George Soros funding. We don't get, uh, you know, mega dollars. And I'm not I'm not even trying to do a preachy thing about supporting us. I'm saying if you have a smaller content creator, whether that be a podcaster, a YouTuber, a Twitcher uh, that makes content you like try, and you are in a financial position to do so, please directly support them because it's what helps them make what they make that is that and that is how they're going to keep making you know content that pushes back against this right wing machine it's so true and i mean the left just doesn't fund like the right like i was in a weird position where people started following me because they fetishize ex-muslims right so Mm. if i'm critical of islam uh you know out of good intent like just pushing back against the conservatism that i grew up around um people will automatically think that they can encourage me to be more Breitbart-esque. And Mm -hmm. so I'd get these like big Patreon supporters, but they would like uh, leave a message like, yeah, hoping you'll stop this nonsense about being against anti-Muslim bigotry, you know? (laughs) (laughs) I hope you'll continue to be a bigot for us. (laughs) (laughs) And so I would be like, no, fuck off. And then I'd lose funding, right? Mm. And... It's just amazing how much funding I've lost over the years for refusing to cave into this. Oh, you know, I will criticize Islam when I feel like it, when I think it's relevant and not for your Fox News type narrative. And oh, it shows you how deep those pockets go. <laughs> seriously, what you're saying is right. If, if people can not afford to support smaller creators, they definitely should. Yeah. Where can people find you on Twitter? You can find all of our stuff by going to wearesurfs.com. Uh, I mean, we're we're at the Surfs TV for most things, like youtube.com slash the Surfs TV, twitter.com slash the Surfs TV. Um, but we are Surfs is basically a good portal for all of our all of our content, all of our content, our Discord, our Reddits, all, all that fun stuff. Okay, excellent. So go check them out, and I'll link your Andy No video in the show notes as well. Oh, thank you. And uh, yeah, it's been fun, and we'll chat again soon. All right, thank, thank you, you very much. Cheers. All right, bye guys. Bye.
Thanks for listening to another episode of Polite Conversations. You can support this podcast by sharing the shit out of it, making some noise about it, or contributing via Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash nice mangoes. No Ian mangoes. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at nice mangoes. If you want to make a one time donation instead of a monthly Patreon one, you can do so via PayPal. Nice mangoes.blog at gmail.com. Remember, no Ian mangoes. If you've got an interesting story and would potentially like to be a guest, you can email me there too. Thank you.